You're listening to Real Guy Radio. How many pro wrestling news websites do you visit to get your daily news? Three, four, maybe five? Do yourself a favor and make that number one. WrestleChat.net, the only professional wrestling news site that brings you all wrestling news all day long and is home of the critically acclaimed Still Real to Us podcast starring former CZW ROH and ECW announcer Eric Gargiulo and the champ Jeff Peck. That's WrestleChat.net. WrestleChat, it's where it's at. It's still Welcome, everyone, and Merry Christmas to you all. We're days away here from uh, the old Christmas holiday. Welcome to the Stu Real Tough Show for December 22nd, 2011. Just one more show left to go in 2011, episode number 97. I am the champ, Jeff Peck. We are in full holiday scheduling mode. It is now the holiday mode for the Stu Real Tough Show for the next three weeks. December 22nd, December 29th, and January 5th, 2012, leading us into the live show on January 12th, 2012, our 100th episode listener appreciation show. It's going to be a big couple of weeks here. The next four weeks are huge for the Still Real Tough Show. And joining me days away from Christmas here uh, on this very special favorite tag teams edition of the Still Real Tough Show, my good friend and yours, the one and only Captain Obvious. Captain, how are you, my man? I am doing really well. The leader of the Redneck Revolution back on the air again, tag teaming with Rudolph and the Grinch to have a merry, merry Christmas. <laughs> Absolutely. And I, am I the am I Rudolph? Uh, you are the redhead in the group. Okay, good, good, good. I'm just making sure. Sometimes <laughs> I can be a little bit of a Grinch. I can be a little pissed. So I'm just making sure it happens. So uh, we're we're days away from Christmas, and uh, we like during the holidays to to give you guys some uh, some shows as we wrap up the year. Um, like I said before, holiday schedule, we're in full mode here. A lot of you guys really love when we do these special shows. Um, and, and the next couple of weeks, we're not really talking wrestling that's going on in, in the current week and all that stuff. Um, we're enjoying the holidays with our families. Um, we're we're taking back, we're kicking back here, and we're just going to have some fun these next couple of weeks talking the Still Real Tush show. And, uh, and I really enjoy doing these shows, and it's great to have Captain Obvious on here as uh, we always talk about the Hardy Boys. And, of course, we're talking tag teams today, our favorite tag teams. We're going to give you our top five, and uh, we're going to go over and, and talk about some of your guys' favorite tag teams that you guys have written into us, whether it be at the Still Real Tough Show fan page on Facebook or over at the Wrestling Forum over at TWFnews.com. And speaking of which, before I begin, let me thank all of our great sponsors uh, that we can't make it possible with this show. Uh, WrestleChat.net, your number one wrestling news force, new, new source for wrestling news. TWFnews.com, the wrestling uh, forum, like I mentioned before, go over there and sign up. WheelhouseRadio.com, where you get this Still Real with us show. And, of course, the Wheelhouse every Sunday. CamelClutchBlog.com for all your uh, wrestling uh, blogs out there. And coming up on uh, next week, you'll have your end-of-year review over at CamelClutchBlog.com. You can follow us on Twitter, myself, at the Real Jeff Peck for Captain, at CaptainOMG, for Eric Arjula, at CamelClutchBlog, and for uh, Big Time Benny Lopez, at Big Ben England. That is the Still Real Tush Show crew. And, of course, uh, like us on iTunes, uh, help rate us and review, all that great stuff. So let's get the plugs out of the way, and uh, let's get right into our favorite tag teams, kicking it off with number five. Um, Captain, since you are the guest in, in this realm here of the Still Real Tush Show, I give it to you. What is on your top five tag teams list? What comes in at number five? 
All right. Well, the way I, the way I kind of came up my list is I was, as I was going through my teams, I realized I, I didn't have anybody really from WWE or, or ECW. So spots five and four, I, I am just going to pick my favorite team ever from both companies and then do the rest of my list that way. So number five coming in from ECW, the Eliminators, John Cronus and Perry Saturn. Just a, a great, outstanding, fluid tag team in their prime. Had some epic battles with the Dudley Boys and the Gangsters. Just between the physicality and the ability to actually go airborne, just one of the most underrated tag teams of the last probably 20, 25 years. Uh, I love that pick, and, and I completely agree that they are one of the most underrated tag teams of all time. Uh, the Eliminators there, Perry Saturn, John, the late John Cronus. Um, something I always enjoyed about that tag team captain, and I'm sure you can attest to this, is they were both, they're really big guys. Anybody who watched old ECW stuff, they're huge dudes. And Cronus could backflip. He could uh, do the flips in the ring when, you know, to do like the Tajiri elbow to the face. He could kick. Um, final elimination was one of the, the coolest looking finishing movers for a tag team. And, and you, you never really under, you, you were really shocked when these guys would come out, especially if you never saw them for the first time. And uh, their feuds with the Pitbulls in the mid-90s there in ECW were just really epic and great, great stuff. Um, you know, we both grew up around that era, the Eliminators. How bummed were you, though, when Perry Saturn ended up going to WCW? And then, you know, John Cronus was still in ECW, and he and New Jack formed uh, the Elimin Gangsters. Or what was it? The uh, Elimin, Elimin Gangsters? I, am I saying this wrong? It was, it was way too hard to say. <laughs> it was like yes. the, Elimin, the Elimin Gangsters or yeah, something like that. Yeah, I think it was the Gangsinators but or something. Yeah, it was something ridiculous, but it, it was, you know, for, for the wrestling fans, you know, they, they, rem they might remember Saturn from Raven's Flock and then the Radicals in WWE. And I really hope people's memories of Perry Saturn are not him and Moppy. I, 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 really, that's, I really hope that when people think of Perry Saturn, they don't think of Moppy because that was just a, a, a down point in most hardcore wrestling fans' lives was seeing that. But Perry Saturn, you know, was and, and Cronus were just – ahead of their time if they, if they were around now they'd be just huge stars just from the, the from the size they had and the ability that they had was just something that you don't it's it's more you see it, it's more common now than it was during the mid 90s you know and so th that's why i don't think people, people give them enough credit for what they did during ECW and they helped elevate that company to where that few with the pitbulls helped elevate ECW into maybe the national subconscious Absolutely. I mean, and it was a really, really great feud for two teams, um, big guys, and they could really move in the ring and put on a great match. Eliminators, Pitbull stuff is stuff that you should see if you have never watched those matches. Um, it, had Perry Saturn not gone to WCW, would the Eliminators be much higher on your list? They probably would be a lot higher. Uh, the only problem I had was when I, I had to see a lot of their stuff after they were after Saturn left for ECW. Because at the time, you know, living in Arkansas, ECW wasn't even known. Like, nobody knew what that was. So I had to catch a lot of the stuff, you know, after the fact. And just seeing them, and to me, if Perry Saturn had stayed at ECW, he would have been the world champion. He, w Him and Taz would have had some epic battles over the world title. It's just, you know, ECW didn't have the money. And at the time, WCW was buying up everybody they could. And he had to go where the money was. But Saturn and Cronus would have been on the level in the American conscience as what the Dudleys were if they had stayed around in ECW longer. Wow, very good point there. Who knows what where, where the Dudley boys would be had it not been the Eliminators leaving, or I'm sorry, breaking up basically when Perry Saturn went to uh, WCW. Um, and one of those moments I always remember was Perry Saturn with a broken neck. Um, being in a tag team match with Cronus as he defended the titles without Perry Saturn, and Saturn did an elbow drop from the top rope in a neck brace. Uh, really cool thing to see. Or I'm sorry, his leg was broken. It was the Pipples who had the... Pipple uh, number one had his neck broken. So he had his leg and did an elbow drop off the top rope, which was pretty cool to see. Um, so there you go. Number five for Captain Obvious was the Eliminators. Um, number five on my list can cause a little bit of controversy, I believe, because I think this tag team, to a lot of people is a tag team that is on most people's list, possibly number one. And for me, in this show, I'm telling you on my list, I have them down as number five. Um, I'm a Northeastern boy. 
I live in New York. Really didn't get a chance to see all that WCW stuff. So NWO st- NWA stuff growing up until they came on TBS TNT when I started noticing it a lot more in the early 90s. So I really didn't get a chance to really welcome this tag team into my wrestling world until later on. And then I had to go back into old wrestling tapes to check them out. For me, the number five tag team on my list 